Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us. My name is Eric Staley, and I'm a project manager with Wake County Facilities Design and Construction, working with our park staff and our consultants on the Kellen Wyatt Farm Planning Project. Uh, we are really excited to be meeting with you to our first community workshop meeting about Kellen Wyatt Farm. While we'd certainly like to be able to meet in person, we are working to make this virtual meeting as informative and interactive as possible. We'll have some polling questions throughout the evening, and there'll be an opportunity after this meeting to review the meeting materials and to continue to provide feedback and input for the project. We do have a full and exciting program to share with you tonight, and we have a great design team working on the project with Design Workshop as the lead consultant and Community Food Lab providing support for the agricultural components of the design. But before we get started, let me introduce who will be presenting tonight. First is Chris Snow. Uh, Chris is the director of the Wake County Parks Recreation and Open Space Division. And Chris will provide you with some background about the Wake County Park System and the general programming. Next, we'll have Emily McCoy, a landscape architect and associate and lead with Design Workshop, um, who's our design consultant for the project. Emily will introduce you to the park site, discuss some of the results from the public survey, and then present some of the concept plan options. In addition, Lindsay Naylor with Design Workshop will be fielding and coordinating all the chat and QA questions this evening. So again, I wanna thank everyone for joining us and we're looking forward to your feedback during the meeting and after the meeting. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Chris to discuss our Wake County Park System. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, as Eric said, my name is Chris Snow. I'm the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Open Space for Wake County. Um, just wanted to give you a brief snapshot of who we are at Wake County uh, in the hopes that this will give you some context for the remainder of the presentation. Um, so Wake County Parks, Recreation, and Open Space, um, we have 10 parks and preserves across the county. Uh, on the map and on the screen, they are denoted uh, shaded in yellow. And at these parks, we focus on three core services, recreation and leisure, which is basically just getting people outside to enjoy the natural environment. It's either through activities like uh, hiking or mountain biking or something as simple as kicking back and having a picnic or throwing a Frisbee. Uh, we also do open space, which is just giving uh, folks a place to get outside and relax. Uh, take a walk on a trail or uh, enjoy some quiet time. And our third service is education. We provide a wide variety of environmental, historical, and cultural programs for all audiences. This could be individuals, families, school groups, scout groups. We do a little bit of everyone um, and program for all ages. So that's, that's what's going on at our existing parks. We have four new park and preserve areas in our future, thanks to the 2018 Parks, Greenways, Recreation and Open Space Bond. And those are denoted by the stars on, on the map on the screen. And that includes the Kellum Wyatt Farm that's in your community. So we're, we're really excited uh, to, to get this master plan uh, out in front of you. Uh, we're, we're excited to share the work that's been done so far. And to, to do that, I'm gonna turn it over to Emily McCoy with Design Workshop and let her walk you through a few slides. Thanks, Chris. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're excited to share with you progress on the Kellum Wyatt Farm Master Plan. So I'm gonna go over the agenda, how to use the Zoom features. I'll also note that this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the county's website after the presentation. We'll also have the presentation materials in English and in Spanish. So please share those uh, with your neighbors and others in your community uh, once that is posted and we'll let you know when that is online. Tonight, we're gonna to go through a background about the Kellum Wyatt Farm Project, talk through some of the opportunities and constraints that the site presents. Also look at some of the preliminary uh, earlier public survey results that hopefully some of you all filled out that gave us some insight into the programming and other amenities that you'd like to see at Kellum Wyatt. 
we'll introduce the master plan concepts. We had two concepts that are slightly different from each other that we're looking for feedback on from you, which we'll also, uh, we'll be looking for feedback from you through a survey that will also be posted on the website after this presentation for you to give more in-depth feedback. We'll then talk a little bit more about that survey at the end and what the next steps are for the process and go through questions and answers that you might have uh, throughout the, the meeting. We are using Zoom webinar and uh, as such, you all are muted during the process, but we would like for you to ask questions through the Q&A feature noted on uh, the right-hand side of the icons, noted below on, on the screen here. Feel free to ask questions throughout the, 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 the presentation and we'll address them at the end of, of the meeting. If you're having technical difficulties or other sort of technical questions, feel free to either raise the hand and our uh, folks will reach out to you through the chat box uh, directly to help you resolve those issues or feel free to use the chat to all panelists and we'll get back to you and hopefully help troubleshoot any issues that you're having. So with that, we'd like to jump into the project background. Kellenwaya Farm is 59 acres east of downtown Raleigh on North Rogers Lane uh, near Nightdale. It is a three generation family farm. It's a beautiful property with a diversity of experiences such as woodlands, ponds, and old agricultural areas. It was donated to Wake County by Bob Kellum and Susan Wyatt. And the City of Oaks Foundation holds uh, and is a part of the conservation easement that restricts certain activities that we can do on the property to protect the natural resources of the property and other features of the property. The goals for the master plan and the project are one, to honor the conservation values of the property as stated in the conservation easement. The conservation easement clearly outlines that um, the protection of open space, water quality, scenic values, and compatible uses with those three qualities are of the most importance for the, for the, the development of the park. Also, there's a nod to ag agricultural production and education uh, that is allowed to be done on the site in the most ecologically sound manner. For us also, the goals are to create an executable plan uh, so that this project can be built in phases over time. We certainly want to connect with the neighbors in Wake County through this process and uh, in the future as well. And one overarching goal that you'll see when we go through the opportunities and constraints are uh, the difficulties in how we can balance stewardship of the property and its natural and cultural resources with access to the site. Uh, and we're hoping to do that through sustainable infrastructure. We are about between phase two and phase three of the, of the planning process. Phase one, unfortunately started during the time of COVID. And so we've had to pivot a bit and shift some of our strategies for the project, but we're still well on our way to getting towards a, a master plan, a final master plan soon. But we did spend a good deal of time establishing a foundation of understanding of the property and the community around it and um, how it fits into the whole Wake County open space system. Phase two is about creating a shared vision. So we did put forth one for the first survey to get program feedback from you all uh, to help guide the options that we're gonna go through today. And so I say we're between phase two and three because now we have two master plan um, approaches and strategies that we're looking for feedback from you all uh, and, and the broader community so that we can finalize the master plan in phase three. So throughout the, the process, we are gonna have some polling questions to hopefully engage with you all. Uh, this first one is just a get to know you poll question. So what's gonna happen is a dialog box is going to pop up on your screen and we're asking you all to fill out uh, if you'd like to some information about uh, about your feelings but here we're trying to get a sense of who you so this first poll question uh, asks where do you live uh, and we're going to give you about five to eight seconds to answer this so do you live within walking distance of Kellum Wyatt Farm within a 10-minute drive 
elsewhere in Wake County or outside Wake County. So I'm gonna give you uh, five uh, seconds about, uh, so five, four, three, two, one, and then Lindsay's going to post those results up on the screen. So it looks like uh, the majority of you live within walking distance of Kellen Wyatt Farm, which is very great to see. Uh, and so if you want to remove that, that window from um, your screen, just hit the close box and we'll move on. Thank you. So now we'd like to go through the opportunities and constraints that the site presents. We hope this sets the stage for why there are certain master plan elements that we've included and why we haven't included other elements. The history of the farm is quite fascinating. We have a more in-depth look at the farm's evolution, the property's evolution over time on the Wake County website through an ArcGIS story map. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. It walks through uh, the great history and photographic uh, history that we have of the site as well. And here are just a few snapshots of the old um, uh, property and some of the old structures, such as the tobacco uh, barns here in the upper right-hand corner, and a photograph of Bob um, and Susan down in the bottom right-hand corner uh, where they used to have um, a working um, farm. Uh, as I said earlier, it's a three-generation farm. There were turf grass areas, tobacco, and other crops on the property. And uh, some of those remnants uh, are still there today where there still is, a, is again, sort of a nod to the agricultural past. But as you all know, particularly those that live in the neighborhood, things have rapidly changed since uh, this time. So a, a few other uh, opportunities and constraints just to outline for you and reiterate, uh, there is a conservation easement on the property, which does restrict the kinds of activities that we can do. Uh, and I mentioned those earlier, so I won't go through those again. Uh, also, there are four farmstead areas that are noted in these white boxes, as you'll see in this diagram on the right. These farmstead areas uh, are the only areas where we can have um, structures or, in, or in, improve the structures that currently exist in those areas. So there is an existing home on the property, two houses on the property, residential homes, and some farm structures. And those can only uh, be uh, renovated or if we put new structures in those farmstead areas. There is one farmstead area on the east side of the ponds in the middle of the property that do allow for certain types of structures that currently do not have structures where the old turf grass shed was. We are allowed to do minor recreation structures such as trail amenities, wildlife viewing areas, uh, composting toilets, et cetera, uh, with minimal impact on the site. Temporary farm structures are allowed like small storage sheds and houses and other temporary farm structures. We do have some drainage channels and the ponds uh, as a part of the property. And so we do have to maintain a 50 foot buffer on, on all the streams and on the ponds on the property. Uh, the two ponds, the North Pond and the South Pond, as you see are in the middle of the site. There's a dam that separates the two with a road that goes on top of them. And then we are allowed parking, but it has to be pervious parking and it can exceed two acres in an area. Here's just another uh, enlargement view of the existing conditions uh, as they are today. We have the two ponds. We have these dashed blue areas, which are drainage channels that lead and take water to the north and south pond. There's an agricultural field on the west side. Um, in the northeast corner, I'm sorry, northwest corner, there's an old timber stand where there are Christmas tree farm operations, um, but there are quite mature woods uh, between that timber stand and the, the pond that uh, through all the photographs we have, we have not seen those uh, removed. So they're quite old. And then we have the structures and the boxes that I noted earlier, which are the farmstead areas. There's a few soil roads noted in gray that have um, sort of, they've grown over, over time, but do have uh, 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 ability to, to utilize getting access to different parts of the site. And then there are mown fields 
uh, and the on the east side of, of the property as in addition to the south west side. We also have one entry point on North Rogers Lane as it currently exists. And I believe that uh, there are other infrastructures such as the well and septic um, transformers, et cetera, on the property. There's some solar panels uh, that are still on the property. In addition to this um, yellow line that I'll draw your attention to, which is a sewer line with an associated easement, that part has been recently um, upgraded uh, in, in the last year or two. <clears throat> Here are just some drone imagery of the site, looking at different the different quadrants as we call them uh, throughout the site. So view one is looking um, uh, to the uh, to the west, uh, and then here view two is the old agricultural field uh, that does have a couple greenhouses and other uh, associated infrastructure. View three is back looking back towards uh, 64 and North Rogers Lane and the shopping center that's up there. Uh, view four is looking to the um, to North Rogers Lane. So you can kind of see the entry drive right here in the middle. And then view five is looking um, south uh, to the pond. So in addition to there being two separated ponds on our site, there are other uh, ponds with dams between them to the south throughout the residential neighborhood to the south. <clears throat> One thing that we felt really important in looking at the conservation values and the experiential qualities that the site presents right now is this wonderful feeling of being immersed in nature. And one thing that we noticed uh, when we first visited the site is the impact of the road noise on your experience, just as the site is today. So we took some sound measurements to try to understand where the quietest and the loudest spots were to hopefully help guide us uh, to where certain program amenities might be best suited or not suited to help protect uh, quietness on the site to the greatest extent possible. So you'll see the red and the orange areas are the loudest while the blues are <clears throat> the, the quietest. And this helps us also put programming uh, and places to where they don't con conflict with each other. If we think about the soundscape associated with different potential uses of the site, whether it be a trail, an outdoor classroom, these are just general examples, outdoor gathering spaces or a demonstration garden, uh, because they, those programs have a certain soundscape and reach of sound associated with them uh, that we use to help um, understand and situate different program activities uh, so that we can avoid conflict between those activities. So as I noted earlier, the challenge for us through this planning process has been to balance all of these uh, opportunities and constraints that we have for, for the site. One, we have to propose something that fits within the Wake County Pro's core service areas of providing open space, recreation and leisure, environmental and cultural education for Wake County. But then we have also the conservation easement values that we have to honor, which are uh, protecting open space, protecting water quality, scenic views, providing passive recreation, and uh, potentially adding agriculture and educational programming. And then we have the inherent characteristics of the site, uh, the site history, which is just a wonderful opportunity for us to, to tell that story, particularly as we lose uh, our farmland across Wake County. Uh, we have to consider, as I mentioned earlier, the soundscape and adjacencies, uh, not just internally, but the residential community um, on, on, on almost all sides. Water quality is also a significant concern, um, protecting the environment and biodiversity, protecting infrastructure or thinking future infrastructure needs to support this new park is also important in doing that in the most sustainable way. And then considerations for access, uh, new potential new access points and circulation, whether it be vehicular or pedestrian or cyclist. Okay, well, as I mentioned earlier, there was um, an earlier survey that we put out uh, to you all to get just a gut reaction of thoughts of, of where, what you thought should happen at, at Kellen Wyatt Farm. So we're gonna just go over what we heard from those results really quickly. 
So uh, for those that maybe weren't aware, uh, again, please visit the Wake County website to see the story map collection that tells the story of the site. There's also a link to that survey. And we had a great response to the survey. We had over uh, 2,100 views of the English version and almost 250 views of the Spanish version. And 830 uh, folks uh, gave us their feedback. These are, this is just a map of the zip codes of where we, we had responses from. So you can see Kellum White Farm here in the middle. <clears throat> and the yellow represents where we were received over uh, 265 responses. And then the darker blue, 41 to 54 responses. And then it goes down from there. So we got a great amount of response from folks like you, uh, since you all are in the majority that live adjacent or nearby the site. <clears throat> We did hear uh, some great feedback from all the respondents and have separated that information into not just all respondents, but um, nearby residents. So the top three uh, program desires from all respondents were uh, active recreation, such as running, fishing, kayaking, two passive recreation, nature walks, bird watching, and then three habitat protection. Then when we looked at the data, just from nearby neighbors, we, we heard that nearby neighbors are most concerned and want to, for consideration for the master plan to look at easy access by walking uh, and then also active recreation and passive recreation. <clears throat> and of course, um, concern over safety and privacy were also noted by the nearby neighbors. When asked, I would most likely blank to get to Kellen Wyatt Farm. Most folks said they would drive. However, if there were uh, amenities that supported safer walking or cycling, folks said that they would be more likely to walk if those, uh, the, those infrastructure elements existed, such as sidewalks or a crossing signal. From the site program menu uh, that we offered in the first survey, we narrowed it down uh, to those preferred program offerings to these uh, that you see here on the screen. So we have habitat areas, open play fields, community gardens, hiking and walking trails, kayak and canoe launch, community orchard, interpretive trail, play spaces, and demonstration gardens. So with that, we'd like to dive into the master plan concepts. So we're gonna walk through each concept and the differences between the two. We'll ask some polling questions to get your feedback. However, I will note that we have a more in-depth survey that we would like for you to take uh, after this presentation to give us more in-depth feedback. So please uh, don't just fill out the, the polling questions today, but please go to the website and give us your feedback uh, through the survey that will be posted online. So from those program menus, we've gathered some um, precedent imagery that speak to you all's, uh, what we heard of particular elements that you'd like to see on a site, whether it be gathering areas, community gardens, nature-based play spaces, or wildlife viewing areas. We're gonna walk through some of the priorities across the concepts. A few things just to note that are slightly different between the two concepts. These can be a kit of parts, if you will. Uh, and so we can pull different elements that you like of the different concepts and then hybridize those or match those together um, once we get the feedback from you all. So do not, don't feel that you have to choose a concept, but elements of the concept. In the survey that will be online, we'll get into the detail of which elements you prefer per a concept. So, Focus on the differences in natural resource protection and restoration, historical and natural interpretation, and then Rogers Lane and site access improvements. The things that we'd like for you all to, to give us feedback on in addition to the program elements, but these are priorities in all of the concepts. <clears throat> Just a note about natural resource protection. Again, that is something we'll be doing regardless of which concepts you all um, uh, uh, end up choosing or elements of the concepts that you choose. Uh, but we will be looking at restoring the existing woodlands as much as possible and uh, avoiding um, high quality vegetation. 
from features that might degrade their integrity. We'll also be protecting and restoring the pond's edge and, and hopefully in that also creating more habitat along the edge. Uh, we do see a, a, a good amount of sediment coming into the pond, particularly the North Pond from the drainage areas up the watershed. And so over the long term, that will be something that Wake County will have to maintain and keep an eye on. We'll also be looking at how we can best protect and restore the steep slopes where we do have them. There aren't a whole lot on the site, but there are some pretty, particularly associated with how water flows. So we'll be looking at restoring some of those drainage channels where we have eroded slopes to improve the water quality on the site. And again, there's some nice mature vegetation, particularly in that northwest corner with some mature hickory and oak trees that we'll take great care to protect. Also, there are um, infrastructure related to the past agricultural uses that uh, we'd like to, to, to utilize as a backbone for any new agricultural uses since it, the infrastructure is already there. So there's potential to use uh, places where we already have mown fields for maybe the highest traffic activity since those have been fields for many years. Um, and explore opportunities where we can use maybe cover crops or food forests or other uh, land cover changes to help uh, protect the, the, the soil and water um, that, that, um, the, that falls under those, those meadow areas. We'll also try to locate new woodland activities near the existing um, or former soil roads to avoid disturbance as much as possible. And then I noted earlier, protect and restore the edges between these habitat types. We also see great opportunity to tell the site story, uh, the cultural story, and the natural stories of the site uh, through interpretive trails and other elements. Uh, there are, there's wildlife on the site um, that is just a joy to see that you don't always see um, this close to downtown Raleigh. So being able to really take advantage of that and use that as a way to, to educate um, and inspire people that visit the site. So we're hoping to use signage and trail name, um, names perhaps to honor some of the site inhabitants like some of our turtles, um, ducklings, herons and beavers and, and other critters that you'll find on the site. <clears throat> and of course, the historical interpretation of the site's past and the agricultural conditions that started, start with the sharecropping of cotton and tobacco, uh, that then transitioned to that turf grass uh, and then to sustainable small-scale agriculture. And we think that that trajectory and that timeline, that evolution of agricultural project, um, uh, agricultural approaches is, is quite fascinating and certainly worth, worth um, highlighting as a part of the site's um, interpretive elements. And so we also would like to use some of the elements that are still there on the site to help tell those stories. For example, this treehouse uh, which is not the original treehouse, but a treehouse also is a nod to uh, Bob's uh, childhood memories of coming to the farm as a child and um, the, the documentation that we have from him of those wonderful memories. So how can we also uh, extend those memories from Bob to the next generation and beyond? Also, there were memories of sledding uh, to transport the tobacco harvest. And so there are all these neat stories that we can use to, to help uh, craft an interpretive plan for the site. Also very important uh, as noted through the community survey is access to the site, which we hope to have a little bit of conversation with you all today on that. Currently there are no sidewalks on the site side of North Rogers Lane. Uh, North Rogers Lane, uh, is a, a has a center turn median. We have the one access point here into the entry drive. Uh, and we see that um, there's potential and have spoken with the city of Raleigh of improving those pedestrian um, uh, infrastructure such as sidewalks and potential crossings or pedestrian, pedestrian refuges in the middle of North Rogers Lane so people can safely get to the site uh, by, by foot or, or by car. I'll also just note, um, they're also somewhat of a blind curve when you do, or blind, uh, uh, and I, um, uh, the visibility when leaving um, or getting into the site is a little bit compromised. So 
also looking at vegetation management um, on the cedars so that it can also improve safety in the area. So the differences across the concepts uh, you'll see are location of day-to-day -day activities, the type of community gardens and agriculture and the scale of them, uh, um, the location of potential kayak or canoe access, the types of nature play and exploration, and then um, the differences in potential pedestrian um, uh, access points beyond the one that already exists today on North Rogers Lane. So we're, I'm just going to show the two side by side before we dive into the detail and walk you through a little bit of the overarching differences between the two concepts. So concepts one, you'll see there are community gardens, which are a little bit smaller in scale than the community gardens in concept two. Those are located in the northeast quadrant with an associated uh, parking area for folks to drive to and have access to that community garden. Uh, so this puts the day-to-day -day activities mostly in the Northeast, whereas in Concept 2, day-to-day -day activities um, and community gardens, et cetera, are in the Southeast. The trade-off is that in the Southeast and Concept 2, we have a farmstead area where we can have an improved structure for agricultural activities, for storage, et cetera. Uh, and so we're able to really capitalize on that farmstead area in concept two. Whereas if we have a community garden in the northeast quadrant as located here, it is farther away from the residents, uh, but it has to be smaller in scale because we don't have the same infrastructure ability in that quadrant. Uh, right. Here, uh, we're also showing that the uh, potential for a boat launch could either be in the North Pond in Concept 1, or in Concept 2, it could be in the South Pond. And we have, uh, again, that um, uh, can be uh, a kid apart, doesn't necessarily have to be married to one of the concepts, but a, a difference worth noting. In Concept 1, we have no pedestrian entry. Um, other than the one at North Rogers Lane. So there's no additional entries. Uh, and then in concept two, there's potential for adding a pedestrian only entrance at Forreston and or Lake Brandon. In concept one, we have a nature play destination uh, and one core sort of centralized area in that Southeast quadrant. Whereas in concept two, it's more of a trail. And so the elements of the nature play are sort of stretched out along a walking trail. Also in concept one, we had demonstration agriculture. And we'll talk a little bit about the difference between that. Uh, but that is more uh, sort of singularly focused on um, education or research uh, and meant uh, for teaching. Uh, whereas on the um, concept two, the community orchard um, would be in this location where it's more of a passive space that folks uh, can, can get to um, and similarly have classes or whatnot, but it's not as intense of agricultural practices. I'll also just note in both concepts, we have limited vehicular access to only the east side of the pond so that we're not having public access for vehicles across the dam for safety concerns. And so that is common in both, but there's pedestrian access throughout the entire site in both options. Also another difference between concept one and concept two is that in concept one, there are family or individual uh, potential garden, uh, community garden beds. Whereas um, in concept two, because of uh, this is, gives the opportunity to have collectively grown community garden uh, so that people wouldn't have their own individual gardens, but it would just be more of a social community garden as a group. We'll get into the differences of those in a little bit. Here's concepts one, a little bigger on your screen, hopefully. And I'll just walk you through, starting in the upper left-hand corner, showing you uh, the, the, the trails uh, that kind of go through these really beautiful woodlands in the Northwest. Uh, this is showing potential um, moments for overlooks um, across the pond. Here we have the demonstration agriculture, which would be focused on things like agricultural research, farmer workshops, production areas, 
Um, and some of those would need to be closed to the public, but nonetheless, um, it would be more for those types of teaching activities. We've added here, uh, there is a little pond. Uh, so in addition to the two ponds in the middle, there is a small farm pond, which is quite uh, somewhat of a secret garden, if you will. It's a wonderful, delightful um, thing to stumble upon. So we really wanted to capitalize on that and add um, a, a small boardwalk to kind of get out into the water um, and then walk around that, that wonderful pond. In the Southwest, we have more trails that provide a little bit of diversity and experience where you're walking through restored meadows. Uh, there's potential for uh, paddle boat or kayak or canoe rentals um, in this farmstead area, or these buildings could also be utilized for office for the staff that will be on the site. Also, take you back to the agricultural area on the right-hand side of the pond on the east, so you'll see here the smaller community garden that could have individual uh, family beds, small demonstration gardens for home agriculture and gardening. And then that's associated with trails that meander so that folks can do walking loops through the meadows and through the woodlands. You'll see here the associated small parking area that we've tucked into an existing clearing in the woodlands. And then the nature play spaces to the southeast where you have um, a Bob's Treehouse that we're calling it, um, that's concentrated in this one area. And then the meadow to the southeast has opportunities for picnics or uh, just passive play um, in those areas, in addition to a small potential parking space uh, to bring visitors to that side of the property and to get um, uh, in a place where it's already been disturbed and we don't have to, to cut down many trees. Here's just how this program element uh, looks scattered uh, throughout the site. Uh, there's also opportunity for outdoor classrooms and the woodlands, uh, but you can see some of the elements that I pointed out with the icons and some precedent imagery to kind of point to those opportunities. Each option has about two and a half miles of trail. We really tried to maximize loops of loops so that people, whether it be a uh, walk, you know, a quick walk or um, a longer adventure would have different opportunities and something different to see when coming back to the site over several times or throughout the seasons. We have about 58 public parking spaces and then three pedestrian uh, cycles entrances as, as potential um, and located here on North Rogers Lane. So as opposed to providing entrances um, anywhere else, this just maximizes that improvement of, of sidewalks, et cetera, on North Rogers Lane to get people into these program areas on the east. Concept two, again, quite similar in the trail layout, particularly in the Northwest Quadrant. This shows potential docks with kayak or canoe launch on the North Pond. It is a smaller pond, that is a trade-off. This has a, a, a community orchard and that area where we had more of a demonstration garden in concepts one with public trails uh, and this could uh, host public harvest events for certain crops throughout the season to where people really gather and, and celebrate um, those, those harvests. Again we have the farmstead areas and existing structures located nearby that can be utilized for those activities and then meadow trails and potential overlooks in the southwest side of the site. Then hopping over the pond to the community garden, uh, this is where we could have individual and family beds, uh, collectively grown produce, and large public demonstration areas. Here we have the nature play trails with not necessarily concentrated play elements, but those sort of scattered um, along um, the, the, the trail uh, that's shown here. Again, the advantage of having this community garden area. It could be a little larger in the southeast quadrant is because we can utilize that farmstead area for existing storage areas, um, uh, et cetera, in that farmstead area. Here's how those program elements fall throughout the site. There were two parking lots very similar um, on both elements that I'll just note. 
looking, uh, and here's just some precedent imagery of, of what those might look like on the site. Again, about two and a half miles of trails. Here, we have the opportunity to not only provide pedestrian access on North Rogers Lane, but there's potential access on um, other places, whether it be um, on, in these two areas. I will also note, uh, we have looked at safety concerns if the dam were to, to fail at any point, which hopefully that will never happen. But if there needs to be emergency egress through a vehicle, uh, we will can have controlled access potentially um, on this west side of the property so that people can safely um, get off the site if needed, but that would not that could either be a pedestrian entrance or just restricted to those emergency um, moments that hopefully never happen. Here you'll see the parking spaces are a little less. So we have 46 spaces, 16 to the north and 30 um, to the south. So we have another poll question that Lindsay's going to put up for us. We, what we'd like to do here is get your feedback on location um, of the site's day-to-day -day activities. So Lindsay, can you pop that up for us? So which location do you prefer for the highest level of day-to-day -day activities uh, on Kellum Wyatt Farm Park site? So we have concept one, where we have it in the Northeast, concept two in the Southeast. So I'll give you all five seconds to give us your reaction. And again, uh, we'll look to the survey that'll be posted on the county's website to get your official feedback, but this just gives us a gut check of, of what, what you all are thinking. So five, four, Three, two, one. Let's see what you all said. Lindsay, can you share the results, sir? All right. There we all go. right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so it looks like. Um, uh, we not an even split, but a little diversity was concept two in the southeast being um, the highest, but a close second is concept one and then no preference. Thank you all for, for those that filled out the poll. Okay, we have one more. Oh, maybe I'm at the wrong one. One second. <laughs> that one doesn't have the order. We got the order. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So perfect. This one doesn't have a visual. <laughs> maybe I'll let um, Lindsay. I'll let you take on the poll question since you have a better grasp on them. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I will. I'll read this one out. Um, so this is about overall site activities that you that you all hope to see. Uh, at Kellum Wyatt Farm. So at a future Kellum Wyatt Farm, my family and I would be very interested in doing the following, uh, gardening or harvesting food, nature play, picnicking, paddling on the pond, fishing, hiking or walking, or just enjoying nature. So we'll give you uh, just a few more seconds to answer this one. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. And there we go. It looks like hiking or walking is sort of the front runner, uh, followed up by just enjoying nature on the site, coming over to to picnic uh, and to garden or or harvest food. But a lot of a lot of interest in all of the options, which is really really great to see. And this one we answered, so we're I think we're good. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'll walk through the types of community gardens and agriculture in a little bit more detail and get your feedback on that as well. So again, Concepts 1 has more demonstration agriculture on the west side, on the left-hand side of the property. So uh, demonstration agriculture towards oriented toward research, best practices and workshops for farmers and gardeners with production area, sort of fenced off to the public so that those are uh, spaces only used for folks that are overseeing those operations. The community garden on the right uh, and uh, the northeast, um, the upper right hand quadrant of the site would have, could have allotted individual um, or, guard or family beds, 
and a small orchard and demonstration area. And then concept two, the community garden is in the southeast or lower right-hand corner of the site with allotted um, family beds plus collectively grown produce potentially for donation. Um, a demonstration garden associated with that, so it's a little bit of a larger area where you can kind of cluster these things together for home agriculture and gardening. And then the community, a community orchard would be on the west end or left-hand side of the site uh, that would have a diversity of crops and multiple harvest events um, uh, per, uh, throughout the season. And again, um, the, the benefit of the garden being in the Southeast Quadrant is having access to that farmstead area for additional infrastructure if needed. So we're gonna do another poll question, Lindsay. So here we're asking what type of activity do you prefer for the existing agricultural field west of the pond? Uh, so again, this is on the left hand side here um, where the former agricultural area um, most recently has been used. So what type of activity do you prefer? Demonstration agriculture, community orchard, combination of both or no preference. So we'll give you five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, and then we'll put those results up there. And it looks like people prefer a combination of both with the community orchard falling second. So thank you um, for your feedback. In addition, uh, we have a question about preference of individual community, um, individual family beds versus collectively grown produce. So what type of community garden do you prefer? Community garden with individual or family beds, community garden with produce grown collectively, common and base, combination of both or no preference. Give you a few more seconds. Three, two, one, and then we'll post those results. What do we got? Okay, we have as the front runner a combination of both with community garden with produce grown collectively as a second option. Thank you. All right. I'm sure we'll get some good responses here. So, uh, so the differences across the concepts and looking at ped new pedestrian access points beyond the one that's already or, or that exists at North Rogers Lane, which is on the right hand side of your screen. So uh, preference here, uh, we'll do a poll on preference of, of these three, these two different options. So Lindsay, if you could get that up on the screen. And here is just another look at some of those potential entrances. Other than North Rogers Lane, where do you think new site entrances should go um, for pedestrian and cyclists, if at all? So Forest and Drive, which is maybe for those that are not as familiar with the site on the left-hand side of the screen at Kingsborough Estate, Lake Brandon Trail, which is um, near Village Lake on that edge of the property. Uh, both of these as an option, neither, um, which would lead us to only have um, pedestrian entrances on Rogers Lane or no preference. So I'll give you three, three more seconds. Three, two, one. We'll see what folks. Okay, so we have a number one leader there of both Forest and Drive and Lake Brandon Trail with a second uh, place here to, to neither. <laughs> so um, very interesting. Thank you all um, for, for that feedback. So those are the, the, the polling questions that we just wanted to help gauge your interest on some of these elements. And before we open it up to Q&A, just wanted to do a brief rundown of next steps. So uh, we'd like for you all to take the survey, uh, the second survey that gets into the detail of some of these elements of your preferences. That will be open until um, the end of day, Friday, April 9th. That will be available in both English and in Spanish. Uh, we will be reviewing that feedback and work um, towards a final master plan concept where we'll have another public meeting to reveal that final concept in May. So we have a, a busy spring ahead of us and are looking forward to that. And again, this webinar 
and the PDF of the presentation tonight will be posted online as well in English and in Spanish, um, in addition to the recording from tonight. We encourage you to share those with your, with your neighbors and friends. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lindsay to take us through facilitation and some of the Q&A. So if you haven't already, please uh, type any questions you have in the Q&A box so that we can answer those uh, and, and go through those, um, any questions you have for us tonight. So Lindsay, I'll, I'll hand it off to you. Great. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks you all for all the questions that are, uh, that are coming in. Um, I think the first one um, I'll ask Chris, maybe to start out by uh, by trying to address, and then anyone else can can fill in. Uh, we have a question: Will the Kellam Wyatt site be integrated into the larger Greenway system? Thinking of the Noose River Greenway specifically, or would that be something that would have to be addressed in the future after the park has been established? So, can you hear me, Lindsay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we want to be thinking about connectivity, connectivity and walkability now. Um, if there is a greenway connection, that would be a, an entirely separate process to the park planning process we're going through right now. We would work with the city of Raleigh uh, due to likely they would assume responsibility of a greenway that uh, was built uh, similar to the New River Greenway. Uh, and their their responsibility, uh, management responsibility for that facility. So we would work through the city and through their process, but it would likely be another uh, public process, much like this, to determine how best to do the connection, uh, where the connection should start and end, those kinds of things. Great, thank you. Okay, we have um, another question. I'm gonna um, pose this one to Aaron White with Community Food Lab. Um, we have a question um, about how one would go about um, learning more and, and being able to acquire an individual or a family bed for a community garden. And if we have any ideas about how many of those beds uh, might be available. Yeah, thank you, Lindsay. Um, this, is a, this is a really great question. Um, I think that the, the conversation that we're having now through the master plan process really is about um, finding out how interested the community is in the community garden. And in later design phases, uh, we'll have to have further conversations with the individual community to figure out how the community garden itself is organized, how the community garden assigns beds, um, how many people are interested, how many beds we need. Um, and so <clears throat> I think, unfortunately, there's not a firm answer right now about how the beds would be uh, taken on by an individual family or how many beds there might be available. But um, we do foresee a community engaged process to help figure that out as we go forward. Great. Thank you, Aaron. All right, uh, this next question I will pose to Eric with Wake County. Um, we have a question. The north side of Rogers Lane is notoriously narrow two lane traffic with sidewalk across the street from the park. Uh, with the projected added traffic, um, is it within the plan to include uh, sidewalks or bike lanes on the farm and park side of the road as well? Yes, uh, thank you, Lindsay. Uh, yes, another great question. Um, it is certainly in our plan to have pedestrian access along uh, North Rogers Lane. Um, we think that's very important both for pedestrians as well as cyclists. Um, in addition, uh, we want to make safe pedestrian crossings across North Rogers Lane at, uh, at, key, at key locations so we can get folks um, across Rogers Lane very safely. But uh, yes, that's very much an intent uh, is to have pedestrian access along that frontage. Eric, uh, while you're uh, while you're on the hook, I have another quick one for you. <laughs> uh, any thoughts on to uh, timing, looking out um, past the master plan process, uh, when people might be able to see progress on the park, and when the park will be done? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so we're going to take this master planning process through the spring. We hope to be finished up, you know, um, in the spring and early summer. Um, just with our bond, available bond money, we'll start the detailed design process in uh, uh, this coming fall. Um, and it'll probably take us about a year to get through, um, you know, detailed design, permitting, construction drawings, um, somewhere typically between 12 and 15 months to go through all that. And at that point, we, we would bid the project and we would estimate anywhere from nine months to a year for construction. So uh, we still have a little time ahead of us on that. Um, but um, once we get through the master plan and get started in the fall, uh, it then becomes a, a, a you know a, a timeline that we can create more accurately depending on what we're all building. Great, thank you, Eric. Um, one quick question from the group: um, Someone asked, uh, "Where can we find the recording for this?" And we will um, we will post the project website in the chat. But the project website, which is waitgov slash Kellen Wyatt is where we will be posting the recording of this meeting and the online survey. Uh, and everyone um, who is uh, registered for the webinar will get an email notification when those materials are posted. So you'll be able to find that on the website. Um, one more question for Erin with Community Food Lab. Uh, we had a question, is North Carolina Cooperative Extension uh, with Wake County one of the collaborators in planning? and as an educational resource for agriculture, gardening, stormwater management, and research through NC State? Thank you, yeah, great question. Um, we have been in conversation with North Carolina Extension from pretty early on in this project. Um, and we started really by uh, working with them to figure out where the Wake County, overall Wake County needs are for agriculture of this size and scale. Um, they have been great collaborators in helping us uh, determine the program options, um, and we expect them to stay involved um, in some form moving forward. I think certainly one great, one great opportunity would be for their Master Gardener program to help support the education that might be happening in the demonstration gardens. Great. Thanks, Aaron. Um, I have a question. Uh, I will pose this one um, to Emily. <laughs> uh, we had a we had someone comment that uh, given that it, it seems like there's limited parking on the site, if there are special events, uh, where will there be overflow parking? Great question. We just discussed this a couple days ago. Um, one option that we have since this is a Wake County property is North Rogers Lane Elementary School. Uh, there's also potential nearby businesses where we could um, uh, speak with them to see if it would be possible to have overflow parking for large events. Um, but right now we're looking into that um, and we do recognize that something that we'll need to provide since we are limited to the amount of parking we can have on the site and uh, one option being that that um, North Rogers Lane Elementary. So I don't know, Eric, if you wanted to add anything more, but that's what we've discussed so far. And we'll continue to, to uh, strategize what that might look like for as a part of the master planning process. Yeah, I, I think that's good, Emily. And I think you know that, that's what we've done at some of our other park facilities. We have shared shared parking and we'll, you know, bring people from from uh, shopping center parking lots or school parking lots and that kind of thing to address that issue. Great. Um, we had a couple of questions. I'll, I'll pose these um, to Chris and, and Eric, if you want to tag team as well. But um, we had a couple of questions just generally asking about um, park security. Um, and uh, one question in particular, if there were to be access from Lake Brandon Trail, um, how would that access between the park and Village Lakes um, be navigated and would there be a gate with restricted access? Um, so from a few, few people, just a few questions asking about site security and, and especially around the site edges. 
So Eric, I'll start if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. So just generally, let me talk about site security. So all of our parks um, are staffed while they're open. So uh, we open at 8 a.m., we close at sunset, which varies throughout the year. So we will have staff on site. Um, our parks have security lighting. Um, so if there are uh, act or programs uh, in the evening, you know, folks can, can see to get around and to move, but our parks are not lit. Uh, you know, this, we're not a, uh, a ballpark or a, uh, an event center where there's, there's not gonna be a lot of lighting. So we'll have staff, we'll have security lighting. Um, we are tied into Wake County security just overall, uh, and that helps, that gives us after hours patrols. Um, speaking to the, uh, the question about the gate, uh, all of our parks are gated. Uh, I, I mentioned our hours before, so we actually lock our gates. Um, uh, in the evening, so it would be gated access. The particular access in the neighborhood um, would be restricted access. Uh, you heard during the presentation, we're actually considering this. Uh, one of the reasons we're considering this is for a, an emergency access if something ever happened uh, with the dam, uh, uh, either of the dams. So it, it just may be something that, that we have to do. So hopefully that will be, uh, um, secured uh, at all times unless it is needed. And hopefully, as uh, Emily said, will never be needed in, in that capacity. Great, thanks, Chris. Um, have a question uh, for you, Eric. Um, had a couple of people asking questions about the estimated cost of the project. Yeah, a good question. Uh, at, at this time, we don't have that information just because we're still still in the design phase. Um, we will have uh, a much better feel at the end of our master plan stage. So once we get through um, gathering everyone's input over the next month on sort of the activities and the infrastructure, where things are located, um, we'll work through with the consultants on a, uh, a cost estimate. Um, and, and, and that information will be available in our master plan. And it's possible that some of this may, may be phased over years, um, but uh, we'll have a lot more of that information once the master plan design is complete. Great, thank you, Eric. Um, another question for you, Chris. I, someone, um, we had someone asking uh, just generally about um, how you kind of strike that balance with keeping park activities, park type activities in tune with this proposal. And so I think uh, there was in particular concern about whether you could have sports play mixing with proposed natural areas. So I uh, wonder if you just wanna speak a little bit to that question of how to, how to balance different types of recreation and natural resource protection on the park property. So happy to do that. Uh, it is something that we do in all of our parks, this, the balancing act, uh, if you will, between use and, and protecting the, the natural environment. We are not building any sports facilities here. Um, so there's, uh, there won't be a ball field or um, uh, uh, courts or anything like that. There will be open areas and open areas tend to draw folks who are looking for sports, uh, whether it's uh, uh, a dad and daughter that want to kick a soccer ball around or somebody who wants to throw a frisbee. And we welcome those kinds of events uh, and activities, um, but it's not we are not building sports facilities and they will not be to any kind of uh, field or league standard or criteria. So uh, I guess my bottom answer is we're not really building sports facilities. You might see a soccer ball, you might see a Frisbee, but that's, that's not really what we're building here. Great, thanks, Chris. 
Um, Eric, I'm going to send another question to you. Um, we have a question about potential um, paddling access on the southern pond. So the question is, if the lake on the south end is used for kayaking, uh, will there be a buffer to separate from private, private residents um, in Lakeland Estates and other neighborhoods to the south? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, and I think part of that's going to be dependent upon how how we approach uh, what kind of feedback that we get from actually accessing the southern uh, lake at that point. So um, I'm not quite sure what is meant by a buffer, uh, but we'd have, a, have, we'd have to come up with a, a strategy um, that would still protect uh, the private citizens' rights um, along that southern lake at this point. So I think one thing we'll discover over, over the next month is what kind of interest there is in using the South Lake over, over the North Lake. And um, it's a great consideration that we're gonna have, have to take a deeper look at. Great. Um, and I think that uh, several several of you all on the, on the call would be able to speak to this one, but Chris, I'll pose this uh, to you to start. Um, the question, what educational programs might be available, especially uh, now, especially now that schools are reopened, um, but generally educational programs that can make use of the park? Absolutely. Happy to answer that. Uh, educational programming is is one of the big things that we do in in Wake County Parks. Uh, very excited, very proud of our staff. So we do everything from environmental education programs to historical and cultural programs. Um, if you've been to some of our parks like it's Historic Oak View, which is just around the corner uh, from this property or up at Blue Jay Point uh, down at Harris Lake, um, we like to get the kids uh, and the older kids, uh, the adults uh, out um, in the environment, in nature. Uh, we do a lot of hands-on programs. Uh, we do a lot of site-based programs. Uh, and what I mean by that is that we're typically telling folks about what they're seeing around them in the environment they live in. We don't do a lot of uh, safari programs or, or Arctic programs. We stick with Piedmont, North Carolina and what folks are seeing uh, in their backyards. And so we're, we're very site-based. Um, the agricultural component here gives us a completely different kind of programming. We have dipped our toes in agriculture, agricultural programming at several of our parks, um, but we're really excited to maybe ratchet that up and take it to an, another level here. So really excited about that. Great, thank you, Chris. Um, and just another um, a, a follow up maybe for um, for Chris and Eric both to, to consider is um, we had a, a comment from uh, from one attendee, just a really nice thought about um, the possibilities for um, providing environmental and cultural education in particular through partnerships with organizations such as the Raleigh Garden Club um, and so maybe talking a little bit about um, the potential um, in future future planning and design phases of exploring partnerships with community groups as the as the park develops. Absolutely. Uh, again, we do that at a number of of, of our parks now. Um, we are plugged into the Master Gardeners program um, through Wake County and, and they've done a lot of great work in a number of our parks and um, a lot of community groups, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, you name it. Uh, we are, we're very big on partnerships and, and would, would like to get people plugged into this site. And I'll just add, add, add into that too, that that'll be something that we will, um, that we'll get into in a lot more detail once we get into the detailed design of, of the park as well. We'll start you know, reach out to folks uh, who are interested and, and start to develop um, a more thoughtful and more detailed design on, in some of these areas. Great, thanks you all. Um, 
one question, and I can, I can I'll pose this uh, back to Eric about parking. Just if you would be um, willing to address, there was one question: um, Is the projected parking enough? I'm worried about parking uh, spilling over onto neighboring residential streets. Yeah, that's um, that's a great question. Um, we are going to try to maximize parking to the greatest extent that we can. We are limited by the conservation easement uh, as to how much parking that we can provide. Um, but we'll get a um, better feel for that once we get feedback uh, from the survey responses to us to some of the final activities that, that we're going to be um, managing on that. Um, I think there was another question there about um, shuttles um, from the school and businesses. Um, and again, I think for certain kind of large event activities um, uh, and special programs that we have, when we know we're going to have uh, a, a parking deficit, um, we'll manage that through a shuttle system um, from those facilities back, uh, back to the property. Great. Um, another question for Chris. Um, we have a question. Will the existing fence in between uh, the Lakeland Estate neighborhood on the southern edge of the site, um, will the existing fence between Lakeland Estates and the park be repaired and remain in place for privacy? So we are aware that the fence is in bad shape. Uh, we have reached out to uh, Lakeland Estates to the HOA uh, coordinator and have been uh, started discussion uh, discussions with her about how best to appro uh, approach this. There is an agreement um, that when we acquired the property became our agreement uh, with Lakeland Estates that talks about the fence. Uh, and so we need to get with the HOA um, and, and discuss uh, this as a collaborative agreement. It's not uh, for the county to fix. It's not for the HOA to fix. It's a team effort. So we just really need to get with the, uh, the HOA um, management and talk about that. Great. Thank you. Um, and um, another question back to Aaron with Community Food Lab. Um, just generally a, a question um, about um, broad interest in community gardens, and maybe you can speak a little bit more um, to uh, community gardens and that potential uh, at Kellum Wyatt Farm. Yes, thank you. Um, I mean, I'm very, I'm super excited that there's so much interest in community gardens, and it seems to really be emerging from a lot of places. Um, and I think that as the community gardens develop as part of the concept of Kellum Wyatt. Um, we'll go into further detail about how a community garden at Kellum Wyatt would fit into the context of other gardens, either in neighboring communities, other parts of Raleigh, other parts of Wake County, so that, um, <clears throat> you know, any community garden here that we would put together would actually be working um, sort of alongside and, um, and to support and mutually benefit other community garden programs. Great, and a quick follow-up. Um, we had a comment um, about um, how uh, the idea of master gardening uh, piqued my interest and um, raised the question about possible classes that could be offered on the site. Yeah, great question. Um, so <clears throat> I think that the master gardener program is, is fairly flexible. Um, and so as as Kellum Wyatt Farm sort of opens and develops, I think that the master gardeners would offer classes kind of based on um, what the community expresses interest in and also what kinds of areas particular master gardeners are strong in. Um, so it's hard to say right now what sorts of classes would be offered, but I know that interested community members can help determine what that ends up being. All right, great, thank you. Um, and everyone, we are just about uh, running out of questions. So if you all, if you have any final questions um, that you've been sitting on that you want to be sure and post to the question and answer box, please do. Um, so just 
one more um, to Emily. Um, I know that um, in the chat box, we had a couple people express um, how much they really appreciate the uh, abundance and the diversity of local wildlife and just wanted to be sure that um, nothing about the park design would um, harm or displace any of that local wildlife. Sure, great question. Uh, there is wonderful wildlife on the property and luckily uh, we have great cover along the edges of the pond where a lot of those aquatic uh, species like to hang out or that go in and out of water like our turtles. Uh, there's also a requirement of um, you're not allowed to disturb uh, within 50 feet of the pond edge uh, that goes for all water bodies in Wake County. And so, of course, we will honor that um, and that provides spaces for habitat as well. Um, so that will be maintained. Uh, we, that's best practice and, and we have to do that anyway because it's a, um, a, a rule in Wake County of that 50 foot buffer from the water edge. We're also, uh, I noted that some of the more mature woodlands are in the upper left hand corner of the property. You'll notice that we took great care not to put um, heavy programming um, uh, activities in that area with some very small low impact trails uh, that go around some of those high quality um, areas. Uh, we do have some um, evidence of beaver activity. However, it looks like old, so I'm not sure. Maybe those um, others can weigh in on that that live nearby. Um, there, there is a remnant old den and some other looks like potential fox dens um, throughout the property that we've noted with GIS um, and will be in our staying away from those areas with trails and in any other program activities. We also put wildlife cameras as you saw with our, our friend, the, the painted turtle that we saw earlier, to, to also monitor activity so that we can be sensitive to those needs. As Chris noted, uh, Wake County Parks are not active um, during the nighttime. Uh, they close um, at, um, at, uh, when, when the sun goes down. And so with that, uh, you know, we're not gonna have any supplemental lighting other than areas where we need it for security reasons that also can interfere with wildlife use of the space. So we're doing the best that we can to again sort of balance um, public access and protection of those natural resources where we can. And then we'll also be doing a restoration plan where we can um, uh, supplement some of the, the, the habitat areas with additional native planting, um, protection um, of some of the eroded um, slope areas um, and other sort of wildlife um, uh, uh, facilities like bird houses or other sort of bird um, activities that where they, we may have nesting areas, et cetera, so that are already happening. So I, I think, you know, we're, we're doing the best we can to balance these things so that we're not displacing wildlife, but luckily because of the conservation easement, the rules of um, staying outside of 50 feet from water's edge for any d disturbance, and then the care that we've taken in placing program and trails we hope we found a, a good balance there, but are always welcome to more. Um, any other uh, suggestions you all have for, for not displacing any of, of the wildlife that, that we do have on the site, which is varied um, and wonderful, including um, birds and mammals and amphibians um, that are uh, across the site. So uh, I hope that answers the question and that we're, we're doing the best we can to, to balance um, access and protection of those resources. Great, great. And we have um, another great question and this one I will pose to Eric. Um, Eric, will there be any art in the park? Yes, uh, thanks Lindsay. Yes, another great question. Um, we will have public art in the park. Um, one of the things that Wake County has is we have a, uh, uh, a policy that for our new community services, um, libraries and parks is that we provide public art. So. Uh, we're doing that currently at one of the new parks that we're in design for right now, Beach Bluff County Park, and uh, we'll shortly be doing it for this park as well. So uh, th that will get developed uh, when we get uh, into the design phase of the project. Great, thank you. Um, and uh, one more question it looks like uh, to Chris. 
Um, any timeline on future parks like Lake Myra yet? Okay. Um, so we've got two park projects working now, uh, Kellum Wyatt, of course, and Eric just mentioned Beach Bluff. Lake Myra is the next on our list. Uh, it's a little further east uh, out towards Wendell, but we're really excited about that. Um, we have funding for the Lake Myra County Park in the 2018 uh, parks bond that was passed. So we're really excited about getting that uh, underway, uh, but it's probably gonna be a little bit. I'd, I'd like to wrap Beach Bluff and, and Kellum Wyatt up and so it'll probably be a year or so before we get out to Lake Myra. Great, thank you, Chris. Um, and I think that wraps it up in terms of the questions um, from the group. So I don't know if we just wanna review next steps. We have a, a few more minutes um, before eight o'clock, but for now I'll, I'll pass it back over to you, Emily. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Well, uh, I hope you see on the screen. Yes, you should see on the screen the website where we'll be again posting the survey, the recording of tonight's conversation. And uh, we'll also um, have um, printed or PDF materials of the, the presentation in English and in Spanish. And that survey, just to remind you all for detailed feedback on things that you like or dislike on um, the two options will be open until Friday, April 9th. So again, please share that if you're on next door or other listeners of, of your neighbors, please feel free to, to share that so we can get as much feedback as possible. We'll be taking that and hopefully seeing you all um, virtually uh, in May. Uh, we're still trying to figure out exactly the format given the, the, the world that we live in at the moment. Um, but we'll be reporting back in May, taking all of your feedback, weaving that into a final master plan. So again, all the great comments that you posted today will be um, integrated into the master plan process and how we choose and, and work towards that final master plan. But please also give um, us more detailed information on that survey when you have a moment, because that's very important for us to, to move forward for your, your park. Uh, so with that, I wanna thank everybody for your time uh, on uh, this evening and look forward to all the feedback that you'll be able to provide for us so that we can keep moving forward in the planning process. So have a wonderful night and thank you again for your time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody.